Hi all, welcome to Urban History. Um, firstly, just a quick update for those who are waiting for the video of our review of the tournament. This is it here, it's underway. Um, it'll come out soon. I uh, <laughs> have great news um, in that I got engaged this weekend. So um, things are <laughs> things have been delayed with all the preparations for that and they will probably be continued to be delayed um, as a result of that. <laughs> so please be patient. This is a very, very exciting time in my life. Um, yeah, with that said, I wanted to put out just a quick video. I got some models from a manufacturer I'd never heard of before and I wanted to give them a review. So let's have a look at them now. So it's called Steve Barber Models. Um, and you can see all the details there on his little card. Uh, it seems like he does models that have been like commissioned. Um, so he had three things for his Panzer Lair set. He had this Panzer Shrek, this sniper team, and also a medium machine gun team, which I didn't buy because I don't really use medium machine guns. So I thought I'd have a look at these, give them a review, and um, yeah, see what these models are like. So here's the Panzer Shrek team. We uh, oh, first thing to note is we got the separate head system, which I really like. It's just a simple way in metal models of letting you have different heads for everything. And if you bought these alongside the Warlord Panzer Lair, I'm sure the heads would be compatible. I know, actually, I don't know if I've bought those. I know Warlord metal models used to have separate heads. I don't know. I think they're moving away from that. But anyway, separate heads. This here is a Panzer uh, Lair guy from Wargames Atlantic. Um, you can kind of see if I put this guy on the thing there. We're kind of talking the same scale. A little bit, th uh, not quite actually that much thicker. A little bit thicker, more on the heroic side. Um, the Panzer Shrek is nice that the, uh, what do you call this, the gun shield is separate. That's the back of the gun shield. And that's the front of it. A little bit of flush to clean up. A lot of flush to clean up on the Panzer Shrek, but, you know, nothing that the hobby knife can't deal with. The one thing I am actually a little disappointed on is the back of the Panzer Shrek. I don't know if this is a miscast, if I've gotten a bad one, or if this is how they all are. It's mm, not great, but I'll see what I can do with it. But overall, the uh, the loader, there he is, and the Panzer Shrekker look nice. The faces, uh, let's have a look at the detail there. That's pretty good. We've got three choices of head. Uh, one with a camo netting, one with camouflage um, helmet cover and one in a cap they're good pretty good models let's grab the sniper team out so here's the sniper team first thing we got we got a little rifle there now if I compare this to one from War Games Atlantic the rifle is a little shorter I think it would compare more favorably to a warlord one but it's not noticeably shorter um, these guys have the heads already attached, so no detachable heads here, but I think that makes sense there. This guy's looking down monoculars, he's looking down a scope. Um, so he looks pretty decent. Some good detail. Bit of a large base for him to be on. Could have been a bit smaller. We'll make it hard to base these guys, I think. But that's something I'll deal with. The one thing I don't like about this sniper, and it's not that the, the sculpting's bad. The sculpting's good, I just don't like the pose. Why is he chicken winging his rifle in a prone position? It just kind of looks like it needs something here for the rifle to rest on. So I might have to get a rock or something. Uh, he's got camo netting on his helmet. He looks pretty well detailed. Um, they were a bit pricey, but then you consider I'm living in Australia and all models are pricey. I think if you're in the UK or the US, um, definitely... This will be a lot better. <laughs> so yeah, check this guy out, especially if you're doing Panzer Lair. He uh, has ranges for everything. I believe his World War II ranges is Panzer Lair, um, Early War Americans, and there's one more, which is... Um, oh, it's not a range. It's it's just a single... Uh, it's, it's a bunch of metal heads for Russians to give them the... Um, I don't know the name of the hat, but they wore it in the Winter War a lot. Um, so those hats that they wore in the Winter War. 
yeah, but um, yeah, so go check him out, especially if you're doing one of those armies. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching Urban History. Um, please like and subscribe, and I hope you enjoyed.